What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel for another EVE Online video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the ideal Gila fit for T4 Gamma Filaments, whether or not it can survive the hardest spawns, and how to pilot it. But before we get into all of this, we've got two things to go over. So first and foremost, congratulations to Charlie Lemon for winning the Blinged Out Federation Navy comment for my challenge from two weeks ago. I'm going to send you a message in game and guys stay tuned next weekend i'm going to be doing the challenge again but with a caldari navy hook bill so make sure you tune in for that one and next i'm trying to get the 400 subs by the end of the month and i know that most of you guys that watch are not subscribed so if you'd like to support me in my journey as a content creator where i'm trying to contra to create the best content for eve online please go ahead, hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments what you want to see about EVE Online. What do you want to learn? What do you want to watch for entertainment? So that I can just keep doing what I'm doing and create awesome content for you guys. All right, let's jump in. So in today's video, we're going to start by taking a look at a fit that I was using for the four filaments that was really not optimized. Then we're going to take a look at a home movie of me taking that not optimized fit into t4 filaments and surviving a martial death room that i had no business surviving at all then we're going to break down the stats from that death room and we're going to figure out exactly what the martial death room puts out in terms of dps and what we need to survive it and then we're going to also engineer the best fit and then take a look at potentially what could also happen in t5 filaments as well all right so let's start with the fit Okay, so once again, this is not optimized at all. Okay, but this is your uh, Gila, your passive Gila fit for T4 filaments. So you've got shield purgers in the rigs, faction drone damage amps in the lowest range mode, as much DPS as possible, four large shield extenders in the mids, a multi spectrum shield hardener, your afterburner, um, three light missile launchers, the rapid ones a heavy missile launcher as well, and a small tractor beam. So in total here, we're looking at 682 DPS. And the idea with this fit is that we're looting all the nodes. So on the way to the gates, you start blowing up nodes as they come into range of your heavy missile launcher. And then you grab the bio cache on the way in, drag it to the gate, you drop the MPU, so the MPU starts working on the nodes that are further away immediately. And I had this all paired with a set of implants as well. So I was using the low grade Nirvanas without the Omega one for an extra 15% here in terms of uh, amount of shield. And then I had a shield operation 3% to reduce my shield recharge rate. And once again, guys, I can't stress this enough. This is not an optimized fit. These are not optimized implants. This is not an optimized fit, but this is where I start. All right, and with this fit, I spawn into this room. So what we have here is we have three marshals in total. Two of them are drainers. We have one Thunder Child, two Marker Pacifiers, so those are the guys that are target painting you, and then one Attacker Pacifier. So these three are just frigates. So I spawn in and I see this and here's what happens. So um, here I am, I take a look around, I see blue cloud, two white clouds, and I immediately double click towards the white cloud on the left. And the reason why is because typically I'd go for the gate, but I don't want to go into the blue cloud. I target the drainers first because I know that they should probably be prioritized. Then I realize that I'm painted. I see the, the lines and everything else. So I target the painters. And the, I'll just pause it here. The reason why I'm going towards the white cloud is because I know this fit is probably not optimized to take on this amount of DPS coming in. And I also know that with two drainers, I'm likely going to run out of cap. So my thought process is if I can get into the white cloud and get a lot of speed, I'll actually decrease the incoming damage quite a bit simply because the way explosions work in EVE, the faster you move, the less damage you take from missile explosions and also the, uh, the Thunder Child attack as well. Okay, so I go in, then I switch my targeting. I've already launched my drones. I switch my targeting. I put all my missiles on the markers, target painters, to try to, re to kill those off as fast as possible because when you're target painted, you just take so much more damage. Should be able to, uh, to kill the first one pretty quickly. Then we target the second one. And now at this point, I've entered into the tachyon cloud, into the speed cloud. So we're going to see the incoming DPS reduce quite a bit. I have a drones only, then the first, um, the second marker is dead. And then without realizing, my drones are going to go take care of the other frigate because they're not on the drainer because I was actually out of range from the drainer marshal at that point. Okay, but ideal prioritization at that point would have been to uh, take out the drainer marshals first. And while all this is happening, I'm trying to do circles in the tachyon cloud to not go out of it, to try to keep my speed as high as possible. Okay, and we see here at this point, my capacitor is drained. 
And um, these guys are out of my light missile range, so I'm not applying any light missile damage to these guys right now. It's only the heavy and the drones. So at this point, my cap is empty, but I always get a little bit of recharge, and I'm able to turn on the shield harner once in a while. Um, I target down the attacker marshal instead of targeting down the second drainer. I should have went for the second drainer here. Um, and then you guys are going to see, so a little bit further in, attacker marshal is dead. Then I do the Thunder Child, which was not the right call at that point. Should have done uh, the final Marshal first. Okay, and um, as you can see, the Capacitor is still drained. I'm taking a decent amount of damage from these guys at this point. Um, my speed is still fairly high because I'm still in attack cloud, but I don't have my Afterburner going. And then I'm going to get through everything and um, end up looting. I start blowing up the, the Biocache here because my, my tank can handle just a single Marshal. Um, okay, so after this, and because this is EVE Online that we're talking about, I took all of this information that I got from the footage, and I put together this neat little spreadsheet where I broke everything down. Okay, um, so this is the actual scenario, the spawns, the damage I was taking, um, exactly everything the same as what you see in the video, except without um, the Tachyon Cloud, okay, without the buff that I got from the Tachyon Cloud. So this is what this run would have looked like. If I um, if I didn't have a tachyon cloud to get the speed out of it, so I took the incoming damage that I had here. So this is raw damage applied to my shield after the resistances and everything else. And I took a look at how, what the the DPS value was, the attack rate, and everything else. Um, and I came to these DPS values over here. So in the worst case scenario, everyone fight shooting me at the same time would have been 966 DPS. Best case scenario. 379 DPS, so this is applied, okay? So on this side, this is all the damage coming in. And this is a graph of the damage over time, and I'll explain this spike in a little bit. On the left side here, so we have my shields. I came in at about 85% shields, um, and the formula here is the raw amount. Oh, you guys can't see it. Um, can I move it? No, I can't. Can I do this? There we go. Okay, so you guys see it here. So this 204 here, this is the raw amount of shield HP that my ship would regen in the Gamma environment, okay? Um, since we're taking the DPS coming in after resistances already. So the formula is um, the amount of shields original minus the DPS every second coming in plus the uh, 204 that my shield would recharge, okay? And this is a neat little graph here of what would have happened with the same target prioritization to my ship HP over time um, without the tachyon cloud. So we can see I, I die fairly quickly here at about um, two minutes and a half. Okay, so we go with the same prioritization. The marker pacifier first, a second marker pacifier about 20 seconds later, then the single frigate pacifier, and then it took a nice long while before I got to my first marshal because I was out of range. And I calculated here, my cap drained about, about 90 seconds, after about 90 seconds of taking damage. Right, and everything up here starts at second one. This is the moment that I take the first damage, not the moment I come into the group, because the first volley from the marshal and the temp child is always at zero damage. Okay, so this is in fact about 10 seconds after I come into the group, and this is with the target prioritization that I had in the video, which was really not optimized. Okay, the uh, spike in DPS here this is when my cap uh, runs out. So when my cap runs out, the afterburner turns off, so my speed decreases significantly. And my shield harner turns off, so I take a lot more damage coming in. Okay, so for example, without the Tachyon Cloud, when my cap drained, I would have been taking 861 damage per second without the Tachyon Cloud. Okay. Then next down here, we have Wit's Perfect Execution. Okay, so the same values for the DPS, the same spike in incoming DPS, except this time, we would take out the two marker pacifiers, um, and then we'd start working right away on a drainer marshal. And the advantage of doing this is that, yeah, our cap would drain, but not too long after we'd be able to kill the second drainer marshal because I realized that it only took me about 30 to 35 seconds of applied DPS to kill a marshal. And then a few seconds after, uh, maybe 10 seconds after the drainer or the second drainer dies, I would have been able to turn the shield hardener and the afterburner back on. So the DPS would have gone down drastically. Nevertheless, I would have definitely dipped into armor down here. Um, not enough to kill me, I think by only about six or 700 points. But let's remember, this is all theoretical. It's based on perfect execution, which rarely happens. So what I'm saying here is even with an imperfect fit, I might have been able to survive this route. Okay. 
And now, if we start working on the fit a little bit, we uh, we start improving it. So first of all, we remove the shield purgers from the rigs, and we put shield extenders instead. Okay, so same exact scenario. This time, however, we're starting with quite a bit more DPS in total, still at only 85%, though we're not assuming that we're coming into the room full HP. That doesn't make sense unless it's the first room of the filament. So we start at 85%, same target prioritization, very different scenario with the shields, right? Um, so this is quite a bit better. Then we go down here and we do the same fits with the shield extender um, rigs, but now we also throw in a medium faction cap battery. Okay, and this is a very different story in this one. So we have a much more linear DPS here because we are not running out of cap. With the faction cap uh, battery, you get 27% capacitor warfare bonus. So your cap gets ran 27% less fast. And you also get a 50% increase in cap. So overall, you're a lot stronger on that side of things. So you never drain out here. Okay, so your cap never drains. So your shield is very similar as the, um, as the scenario before. Now let's remember these scenarios are with a single Thunder Child and three Marshals. All right, so I went down here and I went ahead and took a look at what it would look like with four Marshals, no Thunder Child. So still two Drainer Marshal and, uh, and two Attacker Marshal at this point. Okay, and this is what it would look like with the shield. So you are very likely to survive the wave with the 15% from the low grain Nirvanas, takes a 3% shield operation bonus, and the fit with shield extenders and rigs and a medium cap battery in the mids. Then I went ahead and I said, okay, what happens if you spawn into the room? We've all heard about this. It's probably happened to a lot of us. You spawn into the room and you spawn in a blue cloud. The forecast is high for explosions. No, but seriously, uh, here's what happens for most people when you spawn into a blue cloud. For me anyways, it's happened to me a few times. I typically don't stay in the blue cloud for more than 25 seconds. Okay, so I took that into consideration. And I said, what would happen? So let's remember here, second one is actually not second one of coming into the room. It's second one of taking DPS, which happens about 10 seconds after you come into the room. So I gave myself 25 seconds of taking DPS to get out of the blue cloud, which in reality is 35 seconds in total. 35 seconds is pretty long, especially if you're able to, if your afterburner is already turned on or if you're able to turn it on fairly quickly. Um, <clears throat> same target prioritization with four marshals. This is what happens. So you're still very, very likely to die. Um, we're dipping so much into armor and hull here that it's possible. I think in total, it's about 55 or 5,600 HP here. So you'll likely die if you spawn into a blue cloud in this fit with the current, um, implants the way they are. Okay. Then we go into the same room, blue cloud again. So very high chance of explosions. And we pair it with MGN's mid-grade Nirvanas. So a full set of mid-grade Nirvanas, including the Omega, which I believe gives you 30-some percent um, extra bonus shields. All right, so we go into the room with those implants. We start, once again, 85% shield, the same amount of time to get out of the blue cloud. And this is what the curve looks like, okay? And this is the part where I would love to hear from some of you guys that run, um, that I've run a lot more T4s that I have. I've run about 50 or 60 T4s. And I'd love to hear from some of you guys that have run a lot of T5s as well. How frequent is it to get five marshals? Okay, so I went ahead and I put this together. Um, if we get five marshals, three of them attackers, two drainers uh, with the mid grade nirvanas we would dip into the armor a little bit i believe uh maybe actually 4k negative here i think that was uh yeah so about 40 4100 negative total in hp how frequent is this is this something that we should be worried about um or is this something that's only reserved for t5 filaments or has this ever happened in t4 so i really want to hear about this if anyone's got insight on that i'd love to know and if this is a common thing in T5, I assume at that point, if you pair it with high grade crystals and you bump that bonus to the shield, you, I think it's almost 55% instead of 33, you'd likely survive the five martial room with perfect execution. Um, the, this doesn't include though, popping into a five martial room in a blue cloud. So I'm not sure what happens at that point. Can someone really be unlucky that way? I like that much, I don't know. 
uh, but I'd love to hear from you guys if this has happened before. So now, obviously, for running T4 filaments, the ideal thing to do would be to be absolutely bulletproof, which would be to run the fit with the shield extender rigs and run a set of mid-grade Nirvanas. But obviously, that's pretty expensive. We're looking in total about 2.5 bill to be able to run T4 filaments with a fairly high chance that you'll survive the four marshal room and the blue cloud. So at this point, it's fair if you want to know if it's worth it or not to do it. Okay, so as I usually do, I, I love spreadsheets. I've been tracking my runs in gamma filaments. Okay, um, now this is really important. When you track your runs on the abyss tracker, like a, mo a lot of us do, for some reason, the abyss tracker calculates things a little bit differently. So I highly suggest that you also run a spreadsheet where you track your own stuff as well, okay? Because even if the um, the Abyss Tracker, first of all, what it does is it takes the amount of loot. It takes a look at what the sell and buy values are of that loot. And the value of your run is based off of the average of those two numbers, okay? So if you optimize your sell orders to sell all of your loot, you'll actually make like an extra 10 to 15% on top of what the Abyss Tracker is showing you that you got for that run. But on top of that, the way the Abyss Tracker averages your amount of loot per run is also a little bit skewed in a way where it's it's not accurate. Okay, So on the Abyss Tracker for this fit, I'm getting an average of 35 mil per run. And when I track it myself, the exact same way that, I don't know how the formula is, but the exact same way it should be in my opinion, I'm getting it 48 mil per run. Okay, and total here is per hour, 204 million is per hour, um, based on that median value once again, right? But if you're pretty good with your sell orders, you should be actually, I should be able at least to get like 215 or 220 million um, per hour when I sell my loot properly. And this doesn't include blueprint copies, which if you manufacture the ship somewhere where the uh, the cost to manufacture is fairly low, and then you sell it in GDAR perimeter, that's how you maximize your profit out of that as well. So that might be an extra five to 10 million. And now we're on top of these values here. Okay, so this is what you stand to make if you spend the 2.5 billion to be 100% safe in T4 filaments. Obviously, this is not a be all in all. There's a lot of different ways to play this game. If you'd prefer to just, I, I've seen that there's a fit on there that um, on the Abyss Tracker that is around like five or 600 mil. Uh, it's a really cheap T4 fit um, for gamma filaments. And it's not meant to grab all the nodes. It's really just meant to, I think, grab the bio and keep going. If that's your preferred play style, and if you know you're going to lose it, but it's a small amount, so you're okay with that, and it's only every, like, I don't know, 50 runs that you lose your ship, and that's fine to you, then that's great. That's what you like to do. That's your thing. No problem. If you want to maximize your profit and not lose your ship for as much as possible, try not to. I believe that this is the absolute best way to use the Gila in T4 Gamma filaments. And finally, let's touch base on the fit and the implants one last time before I let you guys go. So this is your final optimized fit over here. So we're using the uh, defense field extenders in the rigs, one Republic fleet medium cap battery. Everything else is the exact same. We're getting 80 HP per second raw shield recharge with my current set of low grade Nirvanas and the shield operation implant. Um, and we're getting 650 DPS. This is actually before 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 the um before the missiles okay and let's talk about the drones here a little bit this is very very important the way you run this fit i bring two flights of augmented hammerheads with me and the reason why is because the lancers will take the most damage from augmented hammerheads and also all of your triglavian spawns as well will take a lot of more damage from the augmented hammerheads than they will from the Valkyries, okay? But one thing to really pay attention to is the targeting. The, the spawns target your drone a lot more since the last drone update that CCP did, okay? So you really gotta pay attention to what's happening, who's targeting your drones, and you gotta navigate this. It'll take a little bit of experience at first, but you gotta pay attention. Sometimes you gotta recall your drones. And finally, the implants, okay? so. Like I said, I highly recommend mid gray Nirvanas and a full set with the Omega as well. But I highly believe that one place that everyone should start is with the GNOME implants. Okay, so the GNOME uh, shield management, 5% here. So it's showing 300 million where I am right now in the region that I'm in. But in reality, this implant sells for about 165 mil in Jita and will give you an extra 5%, okay, this is super important, 5% to the capacity of your shield, which I believe is a steal compared to the price of the Nirvana implants for the same amount 
of shield. And then we also have the shield operation, which also sells typically for about 165, which will give you a 5% decrease in shield recharge time. So I think those two implants are so key and they're implants that are so good that you'll likely never need to replace them. So I think that these should definitely be part of the set of implants you have, regardless of what you're doing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know in the comments if you've come around those, uh, if you've come across those similar vest rooms. And one more time, if you guys could subscribe to the channel, help me reach that goal of 400 subs by the end of the month, I would super appreciate it. Until next time, peace out and fly safe.